All right, guys, how's it going? All right, if your price point is $500,000 and you're thinking, I'm liking the greater Sacramento area, I just have no idea where I should be looking. I mean, $500,000 is like, you know, two years ago, three years ago, it is like you can go a lot of places. Now you gotta be a little bit more selective because a lot of spots, there aren't a lot of inventory, and especially around $500,000. So we're gonna talk about some of the areas, spots, that I think, you know, like a lot of our clients have been choosing them and picking them too. Now here's the thing too, as much as I put the word best in the thumbnail, that's completely subjective. Best is like, you ask the Dallas Cowboy fan, who's the favorite football team, who's the best football team of all time, they're going to say Dallas. So just understand the idea that for you guys, it's about feeling out the areas, getting educated about what works for you. All the places in Sacramento are different, and you just kind of feel it out for yourself to see where's the spot for you. You know, where's that spot? And normally when we show clients like three or four different areas, they know exactly what area works for them. So we're gonna just talk a little bit more about like what areas a lot of our clients have been kind of picking and why they've been picking them and kind of share that information with you. Um, Rick, how is it going? And my friend, I owe you a phone call. I know I definitely do. This week has been nuts. We've been working on that one intro video. Um, it's gonna be a full 12 minute house tour. It's the most insane house that I've ever seen in the greater Sacramento area. Pilot Hill, it is just phenomenal. It looks like something that you'd see in like, maybe the shores of Malibu. It run me of the Iron Man house too, those views and everything too. So that video is gonna be up on Friday. Um, it's already ready to go. We just are kind of fine, ironing out the fine, uh, the fine details on it, but it's just a phenomenal house. And I'm super excited about that video. And honestly, like it's probably the best video we've ever done. And it showcases really the idea of where Sacramento is going with their building and their type of house styles that they're developing out in the hills. A lot of people don't know this, but a lot of people will buy little compounds or little remote areas, El Dorado Hills, Pilot Hill, Shingle Springs, all these areas. They buy pieces of land and they just develop it out. And it's, it's just phenomenal. And going out there was just another thing. And the thing that's so funny about this home that we're gonna be bringing out to you on Friday is the fact that it even in the video we did even in the photos it just it's it's so pale to comparison of what this house is all about so if you guys are looking for something crazy amazing i mean infinity edge pools this this house pilot hill is just crazy amazing awesome and honestly the house the style the structure it's not something i've ever seen in the greater sacramento area and i've toured a lot of million dollar luxury homes in the area i have never seen anything like this before all right you're a good man. No worries on my end. Uh, the pond looked uh, the uh, the pond looked on the pool is pretty is super cool. Yeah, I mean that house. There were so many things about that house that blew me away. By the way, guys, hopefully I'm not getting sick, but I had a little thing going this morning. We shot um, new communities. We shot JMC communities up in Whitney Ranch that we'll be releasing to you on the second channel, which is all new homes, man. 24/7 new homes. By the end of this year, that channel will have every single new home community and every new model shot. And then once that's done, then we're gonna be doing table, round table discussions on Lennar versus Taylor, which updates should you be doing all that fun stuff. So I'm super excited about that channel. And like I said, we just shot nine home tours today and it was just, it, it, was, it was awesome. Even in this heat, um, and my team is just killing it too. So um, I've been really, really blessed and I thank them, Ashlyn, Nikki, thank you guys very much for going out there and bearing with me, it was, it was a great shoot. Okay, so let's get to the topic du jour and let's talk a little bit about the 500 price point. Now, $500,000, you, you, like I said, like three years ago, $500,000, you're buying in areas like Fair Oaks, you're buying areas like Carmichael, you're buying in areas, now, now and again, you'll find a house in those areas too, but they tend to be a little bit more of like the fixer uppers. So let's break it down a little bit too. Too, okay. First, I want to do the honorable mentions three and twos for under $500,000. Wherever a lot of our clients kind of have, have, have they been picking? Um, the two spots that I would say the majority of my clients have been picking for three and twos. Now, first of all, for three and two, in my personal humble opinion, if I'm going for a three and two, I need the primary bedroom to be big. One of the things that lacks in some of the four and two bedrooms that I've seen in the Sacramento area is the fact that like, you don't really have a primary bedroom. The bedroom might be a little bit bigger, but there's not a, like a, the wow factor, the walk-in closet or like a big bathroom. So, you know, if it's gonna be a three and two, I need it to basically have a big primary room. So we're gonna say for a three and two for maybe like, I would say like maybe 1650 square feet, a lot of our clients have been going to either Roseville or to Elk Grove. They like the areas there. Now for me, there's like I said, there's no real best or you know, hey, this is the spot you should buy in. But they've decided that based on like the idea if they're gonna like you know 
decide to rent the property later on down the road. Um, they're looking at not only as a place to live, but they're also looking at as an asset. And Elk Grove is like just growing like crazy and Roseville always has. So Roseville and Elk Grove tend to be the two spots people are, are okay with the three and two as opposed to going over with the four and two. Um, rental revenue there is really good. The ROI is always good in, um, in the Elk Grove area. Um, not only that, you have a lot of families, long-term tenants. Roseville, the same thing. Roseville's also, the thing about Roseville that I really like is the fact that you are super close to like, you know, and we're not talking West Roseville just yet. W Roseville, as far as you're close to the Galleria, you're close to the fountains, you're close to a lot of the main shopping in the Sacramento area. And if you're someone who basically says, you know what, I'm going to be moving up to the greater Sacramento area. I need to be around some great, great shopping. Roseville is our hub for shopping. It's the main hub you're going to go to for shopping. Yes, there's Arden. Yes, there's downtown. Yes, there's Folsom. But like the Roseville Galleria, the fountains, all those stores over there, there's such a amazing amount of shopping out there. That's basically where our shopping is at. Um, so for Roseville, if you can get something maybe like a three and two under $500,000, you're probably gonna get like a ranch style home out in the Roseville area, especially if you're near the gallery of fountains. Um, those tend to be good just because you're also close to a big uh, economic kind of hub where we have a lot of like, you know, with the mall, we also have a lot of like buildings, and a lot of um, businesses out there too. So let's say, for example, you say to yourself, look, I want to eventually buy that big house Mark always talks about, but I need to start somewhere first. And I kind of want to gauge the market. The idea for all our clients that we always work with them on is the idea of like, if you're going to be buying something in this area, we want it to be something that in three or four years, if, you know, if, I mean, every, some person can stay in the house for all their lives, but if you decide to like move, you might not be calling us to sell it. You might be calling us to say, hey, Mark, do you have any property managers? Because our place we found out can rent for this much. So you, in my opinion, if you're thinking about making the jump to another area, you want to pick spots that have historically good appreciation, but also rental ROI. Roseville definitely has that and Elk Grove does as well too. Now, the thing with Elk Grove though, it's a little bit, a little different. Like when, and when I talk about Roseville and the three and twos, I'm talking about maybe older Roseville. I'm talking about the stuff that's maybe like a good five to maybe eight minute drive to the Galleria. Elk Grove is a little bit different. I would say like the spots that a lot of our clients are kind of picking are like maybe the 758 or the 757. Now, one of the things that's nice about the older homes, like in the 758 and the 757, is the fact that they don't have to deal with the Mella Roos. If you're someone who maybe bought a brand new house at Taylor, Richmond, Meritage, or whatnot, you know Mella Roos can go all the way up to like 450, between 350 and 450 in that area. So if you buy something that's maybe like a you know, three bedroom, two bath, under 500, a little bit older of a home, ranch style, or maybe something like that, you probably will be able to get out of not paying that much Mella Roos, or any at all. So that's what I like about that area too. And like I said, guys, remember Elk Grove is going to be growing like crazy even more. You got that Sky Casino out there that's just bringing a lot of people. You also have the Sacramento Zoo that's moving from downtown Sacramento to um, to the Elk Grove area. So Elk Grove's got a lot of plans. You got another hospital being built, all that kind of fun stuff. So Elk Grove is really, really kind of booming. So if I'm looking at a three and two and I'm thinking to myself, I'm going under 500, um, of course, you want to kind of probably get like a four and two, but a three and two, as far as rental ROI, as far as appreciation, those two spots, our clients definitely prefer more than any other spot in the greater Sacramento area. All right, my man, Sam. Sam and I are going to do some videos together. We haven't, we actually haven't talked in a while, which is kind of strange. He just mentioned it to me today. We've been just running like crazy, um, but I can't wait to have Sam on the channel to talk a little bit about what he's been up to. Sam has been crushing it guys he's been doing fantastic in the new homes and i don't mean like you know oh you know closing this and closing that although he has i just mean as far as the content goes he's been dropping some new home content and he's really really been doing a great job keeping you guys up to date on what's going on the with the real estate market so i definitely want to have him on and we can talk a little shop all right Kevin visited roseville a couple weekends ago spent some time at the fountains it had a nice vibe you know Whenever I look at a place, like whenever people for the most part are kind of like, you know, I'm thinking about buying in a spot. I'm just not really sure, you know, if I'm going to vibe with the area. I'm like, go to the shopping areas. I ran into one person. He was like, you know what, wherever I buy a house. And this is a guy who like bought like four or five different houses during the course of his life. He's like, we always go to Target. 
We always find the target and we just people watch and we see what type of people are coming to the target. And if we gel with them, great. If not, it's a big red flag. So I thought that that was kind of funny. But I do think, though, for anyone coming up to the Sacramento area um, and you're hearing about some amazing stuff, maybe on this channel, amazing spots you should definitely check out. Um, I think not only driving by the streets around the house, you know, and maybe coming at different times of the day, seeing traffic cycles, checking Google Maps on as far as how far it takes you to get from point A to point B. I also think going to like the shopping centers, I think going to the school areas and everything too is just vital. If it's me and I'm moving to a new area and I don't really know that much about the area, um, I would definitely be scoping out like where I'd shopping, the people around there. I'd be looking over my neighbors. I'd be doing all that stuff. I mean, it just keeps you a little bit more educated on what you're looking to buy. The last thing you want to do in this market of low inventory and high interest rates is if you see something and you're like, oh my God, we've not seen a three and two in so long. We got to jump on it. And then you grab it. And then all of a sudden you realize that like you really don't like the community. You don't like the area. You don't like the shopping. So do your education ahead of time. And like I said, you know, in this in this market right now, I don't really see a huge urgency in pulling the trigger. I know I'm a realtor. That's horrible. I shouldn't be saying that. But what I am saying is kind of figure out a little bit about what you want. Figure out the communities if they work for you. Um, take a couple trips up to the greater Sacramento area and just scout out places that you might work with you. You know what I mean? Like, this is a big decision. I mean, no matter what price, price point you're looking at, it's a huge decision. So I would definitely do my education ahead of time. All right. Da, da, da. Incredible channel and content. Thanks. Those comments seriously make my day. I know it's sad. It's sad, but thank you so much for that comment. Like I said, guys, we have so much content coming out on this channel. Like I said, Friday's Pilot Hill video is going to just blow everything away. And then um, the content we have also coming in, we're going to be showcasing new like areas that we've showcased before, but how they've kind of grown in the last five years, like Land Park, Midtown, Roseville, all that stuff. So yeah, it's going to be a fun, 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 you know, next six months to a year kind of blowing up this channel a little bit more and showing you guys a little bit about what the greater Sacramento has to offer um, because it's changing guys like we're on a growth spurt and a lot of people don't get that you know a lot of areas kind of stay the same like for me I grew up in Marin, Terra Linda, Sa San Rafael they stayed the same they're the, pretty much the same kind of spots that were when I when I grew up there because there's not a whole lot of new home building here in Sacramento because of the new home building a lot of people moving into the area you know you know starting restaurants or new jobs or new companies entrepreneurship like Sacramento is on a huge, huge growth spurt and people now are seeing the difference and people are now seeing Sacramento for the first time and going like, wow, you know, but it's a different Sacramento than it was like five years ago than 10 years ago. So I'm excited to see the growth of the Sacramento area. And like I said, I could have done real estate, I could have started this channel anywhere, but I just love our area. I love our possibilities. I love our job market. I love the idea the house prices comparatively towards California are very, very affordable. And I love California. You know, a lot of people move out of the area and good for you if this doesn't work for you, but I love the California lifestyle. And I love Sacramento's location and how it's still, still on the cusp of booming. I mean, I know a lot of people will see the prices that happened the last three years and go, oh my, Sacramento's still down. It just went crazy. It's still got long ways to go, guys. Um, with, you know, freeway possibilities between Elk Grove and El Dorado Hills. We got like Folsom Ranch that by 2030 is going to have like Dignity Health, uh, you know, UC Davis Medical Center over there, new commercial development. I mean, the craziest part about Folsom too is when you're driving down the 50 now, you can't even see the new homes because the commercial development is coming in over there too. So good things are happening in the Sacramento area. And for all those people who moved to the area, maybe the last couple of years or are planning on it, you're going to be on the ground floor or something pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, so let's get into some more of these $500,000 homes. And yeah, Sam, you and I will go to Target. We'll take some photos and send them to our clients. But yeah, Target, man. Who knew? Who knew? All right, if you guys could also take a second to like, subscribe, and comment. It would help me a lot to push it out through the YouTube algorithm. All right. All right, could you please inform us about the bad areas, the areas you don't buy? <laughs> um, here's the thing for me. It's like one of the things that it's, it's so subjective about that. And I know it, it's kind of like a, you know, getting out of jail free card type thing, but it is so subjective about like talking about areas and talking about that kind of stuff too. What I would recommend to a lot of people though, is that, um, there are resources out there. Like for example, like this one resource I tell people too, I'm like greatschools.org. 
it is a fantastic research uh, tool to for schools. If you're looking at a house, if you're looking at an area, type it in and you can see the schools. Um, there's also crime reports on the various areas as well too. But for us, for the most part, like, you know, I would say, come up for a weekend. Let us take you a little bit of a tour on the greater Sacramento area. And we can talk a little shop about what for you defines the areas you're looking for and the areas you're not looking for. And then we can take it from there. All right. What area has the best price to rent ratio, Mark? Ooh, okay, that, okay, first of all, I'm a big fan of Natomas. I know what everyone's gonna say, flood insurance. Natomas for me, ah, and I know people are like, kind of like a lot of people are like, ah, Natomas is. Here, here's the thing though, too. You can't just think of it as in like, for, well, first of all, the rental ROI for my clients out there, like we're talking like for four and two, three thousand dollars all day long. But here's the thing that I love about the Natomas area um, is the fact that like when, like imagine if someone from Chicago, right? Someone from Chicago is, is thinking about moving to Sacramento or maybe even just visiting Sacramento or coming here for interviews, right? They have no idea where Elk Grove is. <laughs> they don't know where Roseville is. They don't know where, anyway. they just know Sacramento and they have that kind of fear of like, like, I need to be near downtown. Elk Grove, yeah, it's close to downtown, but it, it seems like, how close is it? Like, is it a different thing? So I love the Natomas area because it's kind of its own entity and it's it's part of Sacramento proper. So when people search for it, they find it. I like Beezer the Cove. I think those units, when they were, when they were selling, I think the rental ROI was fantastic on it. Um, so for me, I like it. I think Folsom is going to be definitely a player. Although the only thing about Folsom right now is the fact that I think that new community, uh, Taylor Morrison's first community out there, what was it, uh, debut, I think 40% of those things are rental units too. So I'm wondering how strong the Folsom market is for rentals. That's the only thing that I have a little question on. But I think Folsom's pretty solid as well too. I think that if you bought something in Folsom, let's say you bought it up in Meritage, it was like Iron Ridge or something like that, like, you know, for 650, I think you could rent that thing all day long. So I like the Folsom area too, if you can stand or a certain price point, but I love Natomas. I think in Natomas, you can, if you can still find something, and I think you can for like 450, maybe like a three and two or a four and two, I think that rental, rental ROI is fantastic. Now, another thing too, is in a lot of, something people don't really look at and they should, um, one of the things, and it piqued my interest because a really good uh, like friend and also we're going to be playing golf together, this one client of mine who um, we're getting him into this uh, condo in Roseville is the fact that we were realizing when we were looking at some of these condo developments near the Galleria that a lot of these big groups came in and bought a big chunk of these condos and they're renting them out. And so that got me kind of sniffing as far as condos because, you know, a lot of people don't like condos because the HOA fees tend to be higher. But some of these condo developments in Roseville are just little money boxes. Honestly, money, money boxes, and they're not even that expensive. They're like $400,000 for like a, sometimes you can even get a three and two, but like a two and one, two and two, and the cash flow in those things is pretty well, uh, really, really nice as well too. Now areas, as far as the rental ROI goes, I would say the further you go out, the harder it is to, to kind of like, the rental ROI tends to not be fantastic. Like. Lincoln for right now until they start building up a nice commercial area, business sector, it's a tough one to kind of pencil for rentals. Um, even Rockland, even though Rockland is one of those spots people absolutely love for their primary home, it's still a little further out there. Certain areas of Rockland, like, you know, the Rockland near Roseville, that area is still pretty good as far as like, you know, penciling for the rental ROI. But I would say if you're looking for something, um, Natomas, I think it's great. I think you know certain re units in Oak Park have done really well for our clients. Um, I would say if you're someone who's just like, look, I'm making my money with properties, that's what I'm doing. I love the idea of buying near the college, the Rosemont area, La Riviera. I love the idea of, of you know, house hacking. I love the idea of just doing the room thing and just making some money. And if you're someone out of Sacramento State, you know, like our, our buddy Justin, who we put into a house about a year and a half ago, he bought a house in the Sacramento State area. It was a four, and I think it was a four and two. Um, he took over the master or the primary bedroom and he rented out the rest of the house to fraternity buddies and that was his mortgage right there and he was super happy i mean so for me i like that area as well too so those are some of the areas but like i said machine you and i have to get a cup of coffee 
Um, we'll talk a little bit about what's been working with our clients. We work with a lot of people who are looking for investment properties. Some of them fly in. We meet them at the airport. They pick out a few properties and they fly back. Sacramento is great for the rental ROI. Um, is it as great right now with interest rates? No, it's not as good as it was before. Of course, everybody knows when you're buying an investment property or a second home, interest rates are higher. Was it great? Like maybe about like two years ago? Oh yeah, people were going crazy. Now, if you're an investor though and you're a cash buyer, I still would think that around October, November, and December, I think you know buyer demand is even going to be slower. And I think that that's the time to leverage low offers and get some stuff in contract. And I think you'll be happy you did it. I think Sacramento. Um, like I had a conversation with a, with a, a person today and they were like, what do you think about the Sacramento market? I'm like, man, if the Sacramento market gets hit and we start hurting, that means all of the United States is hurting. Sacramento's market is located in a fabulous space. Um, you know, it's not at all close to the Bay Area prices, not as close to like Los Angeles or SoCal prices. We're close to like, you know, what's called to Intel. We're close to HP, Micron, Oracle. And not to mention now that they're building that tech city in Vacaville, who knows what type of like transportation they're going to do to San Francisco and the Bay Area too, which is only going to help us with our house prices. So I like the Bay Area. I think that honestly, I do think the, the Bay Area is, is great. I love the vibe of it. But like for me, the bank for your buck in the Sacramento area, there's nothing like it. All right. Boom, boom. All right, Manoush. Uh, hey, Mark, are the condos in the Roseville, are they new construction homes around 400? No, they're not new construction homes. But the beautiful part about the condos is a lot of the HOA takes care of like the roof, um, the, the outside of the house and everything too. Condo inspections, unless of course it's like a complex of like, you know, the landlord is horrible. But condos tend to be relatively clean uh, because they're shared walls. You don't have to deal with it. Yes, you're paying higher HOAs, but it's really what I've seen. It's kind of less issues and the HOA takes on a lot of the burden of like maintaining the unit. So I like I like that. That works for me. They're not new, but there are newer. I would say maybe these units that I've been working, you know, with clients getting them into or maybe like early 2000s, but they're in great shape. A lot of people have renovated them. A lot of people have been buying these condos until their new home in West Roseville has been built, built and then they've been going over there. So I like the condos. I think a lot of those condos in Roseville, if, you, if I showed you some numbers, it would probably blow you away. So, you know, like I said, Good spots. All right, with 7% interest rates and Melrose and HOAs, makes it hard to see immediate ROI as a 450 uh, loan itself. We'll take a lease over. Yeah, see, and and that's the thing. And that's, I no, you're, you're totally right. And like I just said a second ago, I'm like, yeah, interest rates right now are kind of killing our, like, our, we have, when interest rates are like around like five-ish, like, I can tell you this, I've got, I get about like eight calls a day from investors, right? And now it's gone down to maybe like two calls a day or two calls a week, sorry, five calls, <laughs> two calls a week. So those calls normally are feelers about our market. Now with high interest rates, it definitely, you know, a lot of, I can say this, a lot of investors are willing to take it on the chin as long as they have a kind of a sense that interest rates are going to be dropping within the near future. But now we don't know. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of lenders are like, we're going to be living in the 7% world for a while. And I think it makes a lot of investors a little bit nervous. So I think investors, especially the cash investors, are still feeling like, okay, look, we can still get a deal during Christmas and November when, you know, when it gets a little colder and we can make some low offers. And, but I do think a lot of people who are investors are looking for interest rates to drop a little bit to jump in. Um, like I said, here's the thing though, too, understand this. Um, you know, for example, like the HOAs on the condos, you definitely have to deal with it. A lot of the condos near Roseville, they don't have Melrose. So if you can find yourself a spot, like example, like the La Riviera, the Rosemont area near Sacramento State, you're not gonna find anything over there with like Melrose or HOAs. So it's basically like a kind of like just it is what it is, which is nice over there too. But you just have to kind of feel out areas. If you're going to go the condo route, find a condo that has a relatively decent HOA that takes care of a lot and doesn't have mellow roofs. And you can definitely find that in Roseville. The other thing too is a lot of people don't realize this though, is that you can actually, if, let's say for example, you see a condo on the market or let's say you see a house on the market and it's been there for about a month and a half. Um, 
the seller is going to be kind of listening and, you know, for options on how to get this thing done. And you could even like, everyone thinks that with the new home companies buying down rates, it's like, oh my God, just the new home companies are doing it. If you have a good realtor and you say to your realtor and say, look, here's what I want. This house has been on the market for two months. We like it. We're okay with the price. If we can get like 20 or $30,000 to buy down our rate, you can definitely do stuff like that. You can have some money to go going towards closing costs, all that kind of fun stuff. You just have to be a little bit creative, a little bit about the offer you put in. So getting back to your question, yeah, 7% horrible. And a lot of the stuff won't ROI too well. You just have to be very, very picky. Now, the brutal part is like three years ago, almost you could close your eyes and just put your finger down in Sacramento and you'd ROI. Now it's just gonna be harder. But I will say this, for the smart investor, there's still some stuff out there that, that works. You know, like, for example, that community over, and we'll go into some of the four and two areas for under 500 that I like. Actually, let's go into it right now. All right. So let's switch gears and we'll go, if you're looking for a four and two under $500,000, what are the areas that I'd be targeting? First of all, you're gonna see right now with inventory, there's not a whole lot of under $500,000 for four and twos. You could probably get like a like maybe a new one at Meritage in Elk Grove, maybe a new one at like in Roseville with Meritage, but it's a hard one. To, it's just hard. New homes for that price point, it's just not really good unless you're looking at maybe like a KB or maybe like a Meritage or you're looking at something like I don't know, maybe DR Horton Express, something like that. So, okay, let's just go to resale right now. Four and twos, if I'm looking for a four and two, the areas that I would be focused on that, that you're probably gonna see some pop up would be number one is Antelope. A lot of people don't like, like Antelope. I like Antelope. I like the location of Antelope. I like the fact that since West Roseville, they're building a whole lot of brand new homes. I like Antelope for its location, and I think Antelope is going to develop really, really nicely because what you're going to see also in West Roseville is that they're building new schools. And so I do see Antelope being one of those spots that if like, if the growth happens the way West Roseville is going to grow, Antelope is going to go along with it. So I do like Antelope as far as the possibilities for four and two under $500,000. Um, Antelope and all the areas that I'm going to mention to you, honestly, are areas also you have to look at it street by street, community community, and you have to go out there and vibe it out for yourself. Like I said, go to gradeschools.org and see if they work for you. Okay, number two on my list, if you're looking for under $500,000, a four and two, I would say Citrus Heights. So like Citrus, I think Citrus is a fantastic spot. Um, other, you know, honorable mentions like Carmichael, Orangevale, Fair Oaks. I think those for four and two under 500, that's not going to happen unless you see a real, real fixer. Um, okay, so Citrus Heights, I like it. I think the location is good in Citrus Heights. Citrus Heights is one of those areas in the Sacramento area where it's like you can get like a house for under like 300, you know, a big fixer over there, but you can also get a house for 2 million over there too. But I think Citrus, they still have some sort of inventory there in the underneath the 500 range for four and twos. Probably not gonna be going over 2,000 square feet, but I still think Citrus is a very, very hot market in that price point. And like I said, guys, what you're gonna notice is also like, as interest rates get higher, what you're gonna notice is that the lower price points are gonna get more and more competitive. The 500s, the 450s, the 600s, 650s, they're, they're gonna get super competitive. Okay, so Citrus is another area I'd look at if I was looking for a four and two under 500. Um, I like Rancho Cordova as well too. I think areas in Rancho that I would kind of keep my eye out for are the areas kind of like um, on Zinfandel past the Kaiser over there too. There's some new homes um, over there that were built, four and twos. I still think you can get one for probably under $500,000, but you gotta look. I like that area because number one is um, the houses tend to be a little bit newer, so less problems. The other thing I like about that area specifically is also because Kaiser's there, I've seen a lot of people who bought houses there then move out of the area and keep their houses and they just rent it to like nurses and doctors that are moving in to work at that Kaiser on Zinfandel. So I like that area. I think Rancho is still doable for under 500. Um, number four areas like La Riviera, that whole area near Sacramento State. I think it's really kind of a cute area. I think it's by the water or, you know, by by the uh, the river over there too. I think Sac State eats up a lot. The students at Sac State eat up a lot of the rentals. So I think in, the, in that area too, if you end up turning it into like a house hack or if you end up turning it into your first rental property, I think because the students eat up so much of the rentals, we still have some government buildings. I think the DMV is over there too, but the rental rates tend to be pretty good there. I mean, not now with the 7%, but you know, pretty much normally. Okay, number five I'd say is North Natomas. 
under $500,000. I still think it's doable for a four and two. You're definitely not getting over 2,000 square feet, but I think you're still pretty much there. Um, you have to worry. The only thing you have to worry is if you go with a unit that's maybe like three to four years old, you're probably going to have to deal with some Melrose, some HOAs, and you're going to have to deal with flood. I just like Natomas because it's a searchable idea that when people don't know the area, they search Sacramento and they see something that looks nice, like in the Cove at Beezer. It tends to be a win for a lot of people. So I do like the North and the Tomes area for that, especially for if you're looking under five for four and two. Number six on my list would be West Sacramento. A lot of people omit West Sacramento from their searches because it is in Yolo County. And a lot of people will just like in the realtors will just do Sacramento County and give you a bunch. West Sacramento is in Yolo County. Um, the bear of West Sacramento is, is a little country getting out there and Jefferson gets bogged down at nine and five, but you get Delta breezes and the price point there is nice. The only for me, myself, myself, the only thing that I'm not a big fan of West Sacramento is a lot of the new home builders don't build big backyards. Some do, maybe one out of five, but for the most part, a lot of the builders out there don't give you that big backyard that you're going to find in maybe like West Roseville or like in like the Folsom area too. But I do think West Sacramento is going to explode also. It's going to go because Doco, Doco, the downtown area of Sacramento is kind of just booming right there. Midtown area is booming, like, you know, Tahoe Park is booming too. And I think a lot of people like that separation, and I think West Sacramento gives it to them. So I think that West Sacramento is probably my number six pick for under $500,000. A lot of our clients, you know, at first when they're driving out there, it's a little farmy, but they get out there, they see the price points, they see the house styles, they see the age of the homes, and they really, really like the West Sacramento vibe. Um, there's some great pumpkin patches out there as well too. Okay, number seven. And this is my last spot that I'm going to hit on today for the 500s. If you're looking for 500, if you're looking for a four and two, I like the vineyard area. It's right next to Elk Grove and you're in the Elk Grove Unified School District for most of vineyards. So I like that area. I think it still needs to be developed, but I like the communities that are growing out there. I think you're like right next to Elk Grove, but you're just probably paying $100,000 less than you'd be paying living in Elk Grove. I think you could definitely get un, a four, you know, a four and two under five hundred thousand dollars there. In fact, I think you could probably even make a brand new home happen at um, what's called uh, that one community by um, Taylor Morrison that's out there as well too. So I think Vineyard's a good spot. I think if you're looking for something up and coming, like I said, Elk Grove is gonna just grow, 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 and Vineyard is right there. So I like that area too, as far as being close to a really, really like popular area like Elk Grove, getting the benefits of being part of the Elk Grove Unified School District, um, and an area that they're gonna be developing, growing, and it's 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 a nice area. So if it's me and I'm looking for like under $500,000 for a four and two, those are probably the seven areas that I would kind of start on. Like I said, in the greater Sacramento area, you're gonna find like right now with low inventory, there's not a whole lot of homes on the market. These are seven areas that if you are looking for under $500,000, you might see some pop up. And hopefully like what I've told you about these areas is at least a little bit of an appetizer as to if you should maybe consider them or not. Now, as always, I am always available to take phone calls, answer any of your questions about any of the areas that I mentioned, any video that you see that I have done, I'm available to you guys to call, reach out, ask questions and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay. so. Next part of the show we are going to go into is, all right, I think you can find some in Anatolia too. Anatolia, under 500, it's tough. Here's the thing about Anatolia, okay? I like Anatolia. I think it's like, in my opinion, if you're looking between five and six, that's where Anatolia really, really shines. Um, it's near Folsom Ranch, and I like it. The thing that's a little tough about Anatolia for under 500 is that like Anatolia, before Kehov started building out there, besides before Pulte started building out there, the, the price point, you couldn't get anything under $600,000 really out there. Everything was a little higher. So a lot of the resale inventory that's on the market out there is still a little higher. Um, and it almost makes more sense to go into Kehov, Springs Ranch, or Sagebrush and buy something at like 525 that's brand new. I do think though in the future, what you're gonna notice is some of the houses that you know my, people might've bought at Kehov might go on the market for under five, maybe a three and two, a smaller one, but it's still a hard one to five anything under 500 in Anatolia. If you can, I'm with you. 
jump on it. I think Anatolia is a steal of a deal. And I think as far as bang for your buck, Anatolia is still great, near Folsom, Elk Grove Unified School District, um, all that stuff too. So I, I like the Anatolia area too. All right, let's go into some of the questions. All right, hold on, let's see if I can get a better one. Boom, all right. 10 reasons you might not survive moving to Folsom. The Maverick Bar on Watt Avenue was the best in the 80s. Guys, here's the thing. You're going to see a reemergence, re resurgence of a lot of bars that were great back in the day. And I'm seeing that stuff on Instagram that's kind of fun. Um, like I said, guys, Sacramento, the greater Sacramento area, we're under a great facelift right now. And I'm super excited to see some of these spots just kind of pop on the map again too. Um, Folsom, man, honestly, Folsom Ranch, once it's done in 2030, that's going to be where everyone's going. It's going to be a fun spot. The commercial that they plan on developing out there is just going to be nuts. All right. I was thinking about moving back to the Bay Area. Most people who left can never go back unless prices crash and they have a huge pile of cash. Since Sacramento will crash. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. True. Now, here's the thing for me. Like, I've had a few opportunities to go into the Bay Area or to move in the Bay Area from Sacramento. But at the same time, I look at it and I look at what my friends have in the Bay Area competitively towards what I have and what I'm paying. And after you get used to what you can get up here and after you realize the fact that like, you know, yes, the restaurant scene is growing. Yes, I can go play golf if I want to. Yes, there's amazing mountain bike trails. I can own a boat. Great stuff that I never thought I'd be able to do in the Bay Area. Yeah, there's no way I'm going back. And a lot of people, I think once they're here, I have... I literally have zero clients who have ever told me, yes, we're thinking about moving, selling our house in Sacramento and moving back to the Bay Area. So, yeah. Okay, I still think we'll see 8% this year. Tomorrow, CPI is going to be a barometer on which the way the wind blows. Interesting. All right, guys, you know, Matt, the mortgage guy, a good friend of mine. So I would say, here's the thing with Matt, and this is one thing that I definitely know about Matt. If there's a CPI report, my friend will be dropping a video about three seconds after it's done. So his channel is pretty good. Um, the thing I like about Matt's channel, and you know, Aaron's got a fantastic channel too, but Matt's channel is also like, you know, it's just so current. Like something happens and boom, five seconds later he records a video. So I would say if you guys are interested in the CPI report results, go to Aaron's channel, go to Matt's channel and see some good stuff. All right, Truth Sacramento Real Estate. You can keep California. Guys, here's the thing about California. California is not for everybody. Um, but I'll tell you something. I don't really, you know, I don't know if I'm really hovering around Texas real estate channels and commenting on Texas. I would say the thing about California is it's funny. A lot of people hate on California, but a lot of people definitely troll the California YouTube channels. So it's interesting. Okay, California, thank you for your most current information, Mark. Not a problem, guys. And like I said, I'll be dropping more information, more information. And next week, we'll be having Amy on. She is a the best appraiser, in my opinion, in the greater Sacramento area. And we're going to break down an area for you. We're going to talk about appreciation, growth. We're talking about like some insights that she has into her appraisals that she's been doing. I'm thinking we either go Eldorado Hills, we go Folsom, Roseville. If you guys have any suggestions about that, Amy is a freaking calculator. So I'm super pumped for next week. It's going to be really, really fun. Okay, California becoming uninsurable. See my homeowner's insurance tick up. I don't think it's because of rising home prices, but due to higher risk for fi fire, flood, and, and wind damage. Also think they observe how many trees are around your property, and they're adjusting for that now. Um, yeah, here's the thing. There are so many little factors coming into homeowners. One is because during last winter, we saw a lot of winds, a lot of fences going down. Um, a lot of people had to pay off claims and they decided to uh, that California really wasn't worth it, and they jumped ship. Now, in the future, if you're looking to buy a property, you should definitely reach out to homeowners insurance before you before you fall in love with the house. You know, talk to my buddy Javier Ortiz, Beach on O'Neill. I might even bring him on here one day to talk about homeowners insurance and what you should be looking for. Things that I know right off the bat as far as that is one is access. You need to be accessible to the roads, as uh, fire departments, hydrants. Closer to the Folsom Lake you are, the more you're at risk. I mean, near, you know, dry grass and all that stuff too. So there's a lot of factors that go into play. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll have Javier on one of these one of these weeks and he'll go over some of the things you need to watch. Hey guys, if you could, please like this video, subscribe and comment. I know I keep pandering. Please, it would mean a lot. All right, thanks. All right, as in retirement seminar and the speaker spoke on how he quit his job after he made well over 950 profit within three months. He reinvested in her. Okay, I think this was a, I'm not sure where this one came from. Okay, next one. Truth. 
Okay, and this is basically talking about like Sacramento and the house prices here. Sounds like I'll never go to Cali unless I'm paid for. <laughs> okay, guys, here's the thing. I never told you guys California was cheap. California is expensive. It's very, very expensive to live in. But like anything else in life, and this is how I look at it too, you pay a premium for certain things in life. For me, I love the California lifestyle. I love the idea of being like an hour and a half from skiing. I love knowing that the ocean's close by, rivers, trails, mountain biking. And for me, it's worth it. And knowing that like I live somewhere that's surrounded by nature, you know, hey, it's a premium, but I'm okay paying it. All right, is the population of Sacramento County over or under 2 million people? Okay, a lot of people said that, but it is just under 2 million, and we'll probably be over that sometime soon. All right, still think we'll see 8% this year. I think our economic cruise ship is slowly coming to a halt. A lot of people are thinking to themselves that maybe, just maybe, we're not going to be seeing 8%. I don't know. You know, I was kind of surprised that we'd saw 7.5. So 8% does not surprise me. Um, at this point, I think it's just insult to injury. I think right now inventory is low because everyone refinanced and everyone bought at 2.75. Um, and I think right now sellers, the higher the interest rates go, the more sellers are going to say, I'm not going to jump in this market. Our inventory is going to be hurting even more. So if we go to eight, I think it's just insult to injury. You're going to see inventory levels go even further down. And I think buyer demand is going to follow it. And I think it's just not going to be a good thing, but that's just my two cents. All right, luxury million dollar home tour in Folsom, California. Thank you for sharing, and I love these houses. Beautiful, my favorite. Yeah, this house in Folsom, again, gorgeous house. Gorgeous, 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 but wait till you see the one I'm releasing on Friday in Pilot Hill. All right, well, property values increase 2023, 2024. Great information. Um, now, for me, here's the thing. A lot of people are like, the, the, one of the questions I guess get asked all the time is they say, are house prices dropping? Are we in danger of like, you know, if you buy a house right now, is it going to be like $20,000 or are we going to like lose some major money? Um, the way the market works, it's kind of like legalized gambling a little bit. So you can't really think about in those terms. For me, I did my upgrade about a year and a half ago. And, you know, now and again, I'll get like my like home bot report showing where my house is. Some months it's like way better. Some months it's a little less. But I think about it also in terms of like I'm not paying rent. My quality of life is great. And I really do believe in our real estate market, in our area, in the area I bought in. So you have to understand, if you're going to look at it every single day, it's going to drive you absolutely bonkers. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of other factors kind of like at play. Do I think Sacramento prices are going to go up? Well, I bought a house in the Sacramento area a year and a half ago. So I kind of put all my chips in. So I do. All right. True. Sacramento real estate, real estate. All right. So sounds bad. California is a terrible state. Eh, then don't move here. Um, and that's the thing for anyone out there. I mean, not to sound bitter or anything like this or about the comment, but if California isn't for you, I hope you find a great state to live in, a great city and a community to live in. Like for me, I would not live anywhere else than where I'm living right now. And I absolutely love it. And my family loves it. And I wish that for every single person out there find your place be happy where you live and stop trolling the california youtube channels <laughs> all right where do you think house prices are going to go down but maybe less than people assume no 50 percent crash the, the incomes are not able to keep up the prices and interest rate only thing keeping the market afloat is a lack of forced selling due to low employment rate once unemployment rate rises you'll get a wave of foreclosures airbnb for sales due to job losses and people um, have been uh, warning about but never happening just delay is all now here's the thing guys you know I can't tell you if this is false, if this is true. All I can tell you is this. If you're ever going to make a bet, bet on anything, you need to hedge your bets as much as humanly possible. And the thing I love, I love about Sacramento is, you know, if jobs are your issue, if you're freaking out about a job, you know, oh my God, jobs, and you know, job crisis happening. Number one is we're seeing, the reason why interest rates are high is because our job reports tend to be very, very solid. Another thing too, guys, you're in the greater Sacramento area. We are in the state capital of California and there are a bunch of state jobs here. We've got a lot of state, you know, state government buildings as well too. We've got tons of medical, dignity, Kaiser, Mercy, you name it. We got education jobs, guess why? Because we're building new communities and there's new schools developing as well too. So if you're a teacher, 
great spot to come to. I mean, in Folsom alone, we had a brand new elementary school built two years ago. We got another one being built. We got a middle school. We got another high school. So that's going to be three high schools in Folsom, California, guys. So as far as like education jobs, if you're a teacher, great spot to come to as well, too. And we got tech. We got HP. We got Intel. We got Micron. So as far as anything goes, as far as like, you know, looking in my crystal ball, I can't tell you what we're looking at as far as unemployment rate. I can't tell you where real estate is going to go. You know, I, I, everyone's been wrong and I would never be like that way to you guys, the audience, people who actually like listen here for advice. But I will say this, if I'm going to make a bet, I'm going to go somewhere where I'm hedging my bets as much as humanly possible. And our job market in Sacramento, one of the things I love is the fact that we have a diversification of jobs, which keeps our local economy afloat. And we have state jobs and we're, you know, the state capital. So that's a good thing, guys. So for me, I'm a, if I'm a betting man, Sacramento is a place where I'd put my chips. All right, next one. All right, let's go to some polls and then we'll wrap it up for the night. Who's thinking about moving back to the Bay Area? No, yeah, we're not doing it. Yes, I can't even believe one person said that. All right, interested in down payment programs? Yes, no. Yeah, I mean, one thing I will tell you about the down payment programs is there always seems to be a gotcha. It's like, hey, you can down, down payment assistance, but your interest rate is going to be higher and the fees are going to be higher as well too. So just read the fine print before you go for it all. All right. Still think we'll see 8% this year. Ooh, okay. 67% of you guys said yes. 86 votes. Ooh, okay. Maybe a percent is in our future. How many people just moved to Sacramento area? Yes and no. Okay, so there seems to be, my gauge on this is the fact that 67% of the people who are watching this have 72 votes are debating on whether to come to the Sacramento area. Like I said, guys, I'm a huge advocate in the greater Sacramento area. I love the area, I love the development, I love the growth, and I love being on the ground floor of an area that is just in a huge growth spurt. So for me, I gotta say, I like Sacramento a lot. All right, da da da, quiz, okay. So you guys, 63% got it right, 37 got it wrong, but we'll be over 2 million pretty soon. Da da, who likes Loomis? Yes, no, oh, people do not like Loomis. I can take Loomis. I like Loomis. I think Loomis is a kind of a nice area. Um, but I do think that it's a little far out there um, for some people. I mean, far out there relative, right? It's Rockland, Grant Bay. But at the same time, I think Loomis is one of those spots, though, that might surprise you. Um, you know, yeah, you're going to probably have to deal with septic. You're going to have to deal with well. But a lot of people love building their dream homes in Loomis. It looks like a Hallmark Channel movie, um, but normally a lot of the houses out there come with a lot of land. So if you're someone who's always dreamt of a vineyard or like, you know, wanted just a big piece of land, Loomis is really nice about that too. It's I got, I think, a few lakes out there as well too. So I do like Loomis, but we definitely do need to do a video. All right, the machine, we're going to end it machine with your comment. California dreaming, baby. Guys, Hopefully you enjoyed this live broadcast. And like I said, we do this every single Wednesday at 530 to keep you a little abreast of the Sacramento real estate market. And like I said, guys, normally if everything stays the same, you know, that's just what it is. So as far as our market goes, um, I don't know. I, I think our market's doing fine. I think we're fine. And like I said, if you're looking to buy, if you're looking to sell and you have direct questions, please reach out to my team. Until next week, guys, I am out of here. Have a good one. See ya. Guess what guys, the video just ended. But don't worry, we have more videos just like that one right over there. And if you miss that red subscribe button during the course of the video, we got you covered right there. Hit that subscribe button. We promise to bring you some amazing content. We won't let you down. Now, if you're looking for a team in the Sacramento metro area to work with, we'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We always include a Zoom link down below. So book a time where we can talk to you a little one-on-one, -on -one, find out exactly what your real estate needs are.